And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, you know, to playing Mario, Luigi, and Gary, a fan game that's been created by and essentially for me. Before we check out Goomba Road, we're going to be checking out Pleasant Path for a little bit. This time we can find enemies sauntering about, like this one. I expect things to go a lot smoother now that Gary's got his hammer. The normal jump does about the same amount of damage as the hammer, except it's a jump attack rather than a hammer attack. Stop getting your rocks off on us. Thanks to the hammer, Gary can one-shot these guys, too. Yep. My sentiments exactly. Ooh, there's four of them this time. These guys seem to love getting their rocks off on us. I haven't been using either of Luigi's special attacks, but honestly, they're not really worth it right now. Excellent! Gary leveled up! Since Gary's almost out of health, we're gonna go rest. But not at the Toad House. That costs money. As I may have said in a previous part, you can rest for free in Mario and Luigi's place. Though this game was created on the computer, in the spirit of things, the, you can only really save at save blocks in this game. We're going to see the resting sequence for the first time. The resting music's from Secret of Mana. And now we're all ready for more grinding. I do this rest a couple more times in this part, but it gets cut for time and for tedium. We're going back to Pleasant Path. There's a fairly easy to get star piece there, and there's an extra badge too. But first, I think we're going to go and pick up some items. We'll get a couple of shrooms in case we need them. After you get your hat, if you're unsure of what to do, you could always stop by at Merlon's place in order to get a fortune told. For a little bit of your coinage, he'll be able to give you a hint on what to do next. We're more than ready. The combats are pretty much pre-existent in this game, so you'll be fighting whatever you're expecting to fight. And right now, that's more Goombas who love getting their rocks off over us. 
At least random combats don't take that long to do. The rock attack is their version of piercing blow, which is an attack that ignores defense. Luigi's got a pretty good defense, so rock is a good alternative to their normal attack on him. You'll also find item boxes like these if you check for them. Like in many other Mario RPG games, a POW block does ground-based damage on all enemies. Oh, so you wanna play, eh? That smiley-looking Goomba with the green helmet's a spike Goomba. Don't jump on them, it won't work. Their regular attack hurts a bit more, but they also have raw. If you get an attack item, it shows up here in your special moves. But since they're items, they're consumable, so if you run out of them, it'll, it won't show up anymore. At this early point in the game, items are pretty hard to come by, and they're kind of expensive, so we're pretty conservative on using them. You'll still lose. These guys are Koopa Troopas that are loyal to Bowser, and they look just like they did in the Paper Mario games. As you can see, hammer attacks don't really work all that good on them, but jump attacks work pretty good. Their specialty is hiding in their shells, which makes them really hard to hurt, but we can still whittle them down. Ah, we didn't need to jump on him. Ah, uh, it's not letting me jump up there. But I don't think there's anything up there of value anyway. Ah, secret area. Whipping the badge allows you to do a, a move that causes dizziness. And that can be pretty useful. And that's the star piece I was talking about. Not all of them are in plain sight, so you'll have to check for them. I think we're done here for now. It's time to head over to Goomba Road to grind over there for a little bit. On our way back over to Goomba Road, we're probably going to rest up a bit. And we're back, and we're gonna go buy some things. If you talk to a few people around here, they'll talk about Goomba Village, which is the next place we're going to be heading to.
Man, not being able to jump for Gary must be like a physical deformity here. What a mean thing to say! At least Gary's not quite so frail anymore. It's kind of like being spotted by a Pokemon trainer. Yep, their normal attack did no damage to him. Well then why did you challenge me, dingus? Oh, it's already been brung. As you can see, that actually hurt Luigi. Probably would have done Gary about 7 or 8 damage. Fortunately, they die just as easily as regular Goombas. Yes, it will. I don't believe we fought you before. Since Paragoombas can fly, hammer attacks don't work on them at all. Yeah. See? Looks like you're gonna be useless this fight, Gary. The Goombite's attack causes dizziness, as you can see from the swirl atop Gary's head. Not that Gary is going to be of any use in this fight anyway. The Feel and Fine badge on Luigi is coming in handy here. This would be a pretty frustrating fight if Luigi was dizzy. Being dizzy cuts your hit rate in half. You mad, bro? Secret area. Power Smash is just your regular attack with a bit more attack power. It's going right on Gary, though. The item boxes are conveniently placed on the ground so Gary can kick him open. This area is a bit more developed. I wonder... See, a star piece. Check everywhere for him. And I believe that makes it star piece number six, which means we can go to Mer Lovely and Merlot's house for another badge. Merlot has another badge that I really want to pick up, and it's only three star pieces for it. After all, Luigi's got a nice accessory badge, so why can't Gary have one? After all, anything that would make Gary suck a little bit less is well appreciated. After all, the young man needs Luigi to help jump for him. It doesn't raise your evasion by that much, but it doesn't hurt to have it on as a passive ability.
do 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 You have no control over that, dear. Yeah. Ooh, is the badge working already? Like hell they will! I've already fought through a whole legion of them. Didn't you say that already? You actually can run from many of the combats. I'd only do it if you absolutely have to though. It can set you back. Go Luigi! Pump those crazy legs! After all, Gary's not gonna be of much help to ya. You know, to be honest with you guys, I think I might end up cutting out some of these combats. Yeah, I think much of the level grinding is going to be done off screen. At least later on in the game, the baddies will be doing much more interesting attacks. I may have said this before, but the enemies don't automatically respawn until you leave the area. Another trip to this game's Pokemon Center. I'm pretty sure I bought some more items as well. Like maybe even a Fire Flower. Yep, there it is. We're probably gonna need it later though, but I'm not gonna spoil on why. Good old rock. Nothing beats that. Sweet! Luigi leveled up! Mm. 
Love Luigi's constipation noise. Sometimes when you're high leveled for that area, the enemies will know this and run away. Cool, he left behind an item. My sentiments exactly. As you can see, Gary can take attacks from magic sources much nicer than Luigi. Even without Luigi being rendered dizzy, these battles still take a little while. So basically what happened in this LP was that uh, Gary has been leveled up to level 4 and Luigi gained a level 2. We also got a couple of star pieces and a couple of pretty nice badges. I think we're probably at a good level to keep going, but I'm going to be cutting things short here. In the next one, we'll see what's on the other side of that bridge. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, like, fave, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it and think it would be really cool. See you later, guys.